Um, let's look at some, let's add some vocabulary to where we're at. So yesterday we talked about line set, lines and line segments we could have with circles, namely radii, a diameter, um, a secant, a tangent, a chord, all those things we looked at yesterday. Those are all line segments. Today we're going to look at kind of angles within a circle. Um, so first of all, uh, some various angles we can have. First, uh, we can have what's called a central angle. It says any angle um, that's formed with a vertex at the center of a circle. With its vertex at the center of a circle. It's called a central angle, central center. So in this case, um, angle ACB a, would be a central angle. Um, if we create a central angle and extend the rays out so that they intersect the edges of our circle, we're going to form what are called arcs. And there are two arcs formed by any central angle. Um, the first arc is called a, uh, we'll talk about as a minor arc. A minor arc is the arc um, that is formed that is how would I say this? I guess it's the minor being the smaller of the two arcs. I want to say that. Um, the minor arc is going to be defined as um, the, uh, the points on a circle that are between the two rays. Okay, minor arc, we're going to say, are the points on the circle on the circle between. the rays of a central angle. For notation, we'll denote minor arc here, AB, as AB with an arc symbol over top of it. This will be our minor arc. Our minor arcs will have two points, the two end points of the arc. We'll know it's a minor because there are only two letters. A major arc are all of the points that are on the circle that are not in the minor arc. Kind of sounds like a redundant definition, but it's the arc that's, it's the remaining arc. It's the arc that's formed by whatever's not the minor arc. It's almost, it's always going to be, a minor arc will always be, uh, have a greater degree measure than the minor arc. Um, it's, uh, it will also denote a major arc with three points. Okay. Um, we'll say a major arc is simply um, the points on a circle not um, in the corresponding Minor arc. The major arc is just all the points on a circle that are not in that corresponding minor arc. So, for example, this uh, angle ACB forms minor arc AB. It also forms major arc ADB with an arc. Notice that I have three letters. I have my third letter, D, is a point on the circle that's between now the two endpoints, uh, the two endpoints of my minor arc that's not included. So my D is going to tell me that to find major arc ADB, I'm going to start at A, go toward D around the circle, and come end up at B eventually. Okay? If I want a minor arc, I'll start at A and just go directly to B in the, the shortest possible distance. Is the two types of arcs that we'll see. A major arc will always be greater than 180 degrees. It's always half, greater than half the circle. Um, the minor arc is always going to be less than half a circle. We have exactly half of a circle, or an arc formed by a diameter, or formed by a straight angle. Um, then we'll call that uh, special case a semicircle. But a semicircle is an arc formed. by a straight central angle. Okay. 
is an arc formed by a straight central semicircle, half of a circle. It's the arc that you get by cutting a circle. Straight central angle. In order to have a straight central angle, we have to, by definition, have a diameter. So it's or a diameter, but I want to define it in terms of an angle. Uh, mostly because we're going to talk about the measures of it. Um, if we have arcs, we should be able to measure how big an arc is um, in terms of size. Okay? We're going to measure arcs in the uh, same way we measure angles by using degree measures because we're defining arcs in terms of angles. We're defining arcs here in terms of a central angle. Specifically, um, the measure of any minor arc is, is going to be equal to the measure of the central angle that forms it. Measure of minor arc is equal to... the central angle that forms it. And we'll measure that in degrees. Similarly, since the measure of the major arc, since a major arc is simply just all the points that aren't on the minor arc, um, knowing that going all the way around a circle once is 360 degrees, uh, if we had, say, or we could say if we had two straight angles, you'd have 180 and another 180. Um, if we know the measure of a minor arc, we can get its major arc simply by taking 360 and subtracting the angle inside. The major arc is just 360 minus the measure of the minor. Because they're, they're they're interrelated. The degree measure of going therefore the degree measure of going all the way around a circle is 360. The arc measure of the entire circle is 360, which is exactly what hopefully most of you are accustomed to. Circle 360. So if I give you say a circle here, um, let's try to find some mis uh, missing parts. So and circle O denoted by its center. Um, M, Q, and N, R are both diameters. Let's find some arc measures. Okay. So if I want to find what arc M, N is, what's the, what's the measure of arc M, N in this case? Andrew. 70. It's the same as its central angle. M, N is formed by this central angle. Therefore, the measure of arc M, N is 70 degrees. Um, let's see, arc N, P. Blake, Blake, sorry. Um, Brett, sorry. Again. B, Brett. Eighty degrees, sure. Thirty degrees is this angle in here. Seventy is here. So what's left over in here better be well. If this is the diameter, this is a straight line. NP angle NOP better be one. Better be uh, what 80 degrees, so arc and P better also be 80 degrees. <laughs> um, what's the measure of major arc M Q N? M Q N should be what 360 minus 70, which is yes 290. Uh, arc MR. That's called 110. If NR is a diameter and this is 70, then this piece better be 110 degrees. And then arc NR. Arc NR is a semicircle. Yes. So it's 180. First try, you had, um, let's see, you had a line, you had a segment addition postulate that said that if you could, all the a segment's length is just equal to the sum of its pieces. 
you had a angle addition postulate that said that if you added the angle measures, two smaller angle measures together, that should be the that should be equal to a whatever the larger angle is. If you take the parts of the large angle, add all the little parts together, you get the sum of the do the whole measure of an angle. It's the same idea for arcs. So the arc addition postulate says base says essentially um, that um, an arc an arc's measure we'll say is equal to the sum of the measures of the arcs that make it up. So for example, um, if I wanted to find what the measure of major arc ACB is, that should be equal to the sum of arc AC plus arc CB. This big arc here is equal to these smaller parts. It's all the arc, it's all the arc addition postulate says. Because we're allowed to add the pieces together to get the whole thing. Sounds kind of um, simple or redundant, but let's see. Anyone need still copying that? So find the measures of the following arcs. I want to find the measure of arc CA. Well, I can use the arc addition postulate to just add the smaller pieces and get the big arc here. So arc CA should be what? 96 plus 42 is 138 degrees. Major arc AB, BAD, BAD. Uh, 122? 222? Yeah, sorry. And arc BD starts at B, goes directly to D. Uh-oh. Probably want to find this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is 180. Well, that's 180. So that's actually saying that BD and CA are actually both one. Okay. Uh, last idea for today, it's um, kind of just again defining what congruence means for circles. Um, recall that congruent, uh, congruent means same measure but not necessarily the same part. There's a um, kind of a, a minor, well, a small but very important distinction between congruent and equal. Two things are equal if they're exactly the same. Two things, two objects are congruent if they have the same measure but they could be like different objects. So they don't necessarily have to be the same. You're not necessarily looking at the same piece. You look at just the same length at two different spots. Congruent circles are any circles that have the same radius. The same radius measure. So if they're if the measure of their radii are the same, then the circles are called congruent. <coughs> arcs are congruent if their if their degree measure are uh, the same. Congruent arcs are arcs with the same same degree measure. And 
it's not just good enough to have the same degree measure for an arc. They have to have the same degree measure and they come from the same circle or congruent circles. It's not good enough for arcs to be uh, just the same, just have the same degree measure. They also have to come from either the same circle or congruent circles. Anyone want to take a stab in the dark as to why that second piece is very important for congruent arcs? Why it's not good enough just to have the same like degree measure? Why the central angle isn't just enough? Um, looking at determining whether or not these arcs are congruent. So in this case, is arc AB and arc CD congruent? Yes. Yeah. They have the same degree measure. And they also, uh, since these two circles have the same radius, that means the circles are congruent. So we have congruent circles and same angle, same central angle. Yes, congruent arcs. How about the second example? Yes or no? No. Absolutely not. No, because we don't know that the circles are congruent. They have the same degree measure, but we're not sure that these circles are the same size. In fact, they kind of one looks smaller than the other. So this arc themselves are not actually the same. They're not congruent. They, don't, they won't have the same length. How about major arc STV, or just arc STV, I guess, and arc UVT? STV no. and arc UVT. Are those two arcs congruent? No. Why not? They don't have the same angle measure, central angle measure. STV measure, STV is what, 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees? UVT has what? This is 60, as what, a measure of 90 plus 60 is. Yeah, they don't even have the same degree measure, so they can't possibly be congruent. 